stage six, another classic desert stage with a bit of everything and the personal favourite of the organiser, Hjert. Why? Well, the first half is completely new with technical parts, a canyon and several passages in long sandy wets. So this is, ladies and gentlemen, an epic stage with shots, planes and a breathtaking, continuously changing scenery. So that is 324 kilometres from Zagora to Mersuga. Stage six was another classic epic desert stage and um, ended here in the beautiful yellow dunes of Egg Shabby. And um, I think a lot of things happen today, but let's start with the motorcycles. I think they will love the fact that dunes combinated with fast tracks. Yeah. That that they will they adore that. That's what everybody said. The the combination the dunes and fast tracks, stones, a bit of everything. Skylar House and Padrillo, they're still fighting it out uh -huh. like every day so far. <laughs> House is still leading by two minutes and tomorrow in the dunes, it could be decisive. And the other ones are like an hour in between, so there is a big gap, but things can change. Yeah, four, five or six are still pretty close, mm -hmm. but... Okay, then we have the cars. Yeah, the buggies. bad news for Eric van Loon. A big crash today, the guys are okay, but uh, the car is finished. That is really bad. Sad news, actually. Yeah. Fautier yeah. is now leading with the Optimus buggy, followed by uh, Jérôme Pellichet. His colleague. Yeah, teammate. And uh, they are now leading the race. Mm -hmm. And then we have the SSVs. Yeah, uh, Pinchares is still uh, leading. Mark Lauers, the winner of last year, is getting closer day by day. He's now second overall. And he's doing it all by himself. Yeah, That's like very a, like a, Almost like a biker. Like a boss. And then we have the trucks. Yeah, Vyasovic, the leader still after today. Uh, his teammate won the stage and he's being chased by three of the Dutch crews. And uh, he has a reasonable gap, but tomorrow here in the dunes, who knows? C'est très très varié. On a attaqué des techniques au début, du roulant, des oies d'ensablés, des dunes, de tout. Tout ce qu'il faut pour une étape de rallye raide. C'est magnifique. journée parce que ça fait plus de 50 km qu'on n'a plus de direction assistée donc en fait euh, bah, j'ai plus de bras non plus donc voilà quoi c'était un peu compliqué puis sur le retour en plus depuis sans borne on, on chauffait donc on a dû rendre un peu la main mais c'est surtout sans direction assistée c'est vraiment un roulable quoi donc bon je pense qu'on a limité la casse
Alors ça s'est très bien passé. On a fait une très belle spéciale. On était tout le temps devant jusqu'aux dernières dunes où la dernière dune, il y a une grosse herbe à chameau derrière une petite dune et on a dû mettre les plaques. On a perdu 6-7 minutes. Donc évidemment, on a perdu la première place, mais c'est pas grave. On a fait quand même une très bonne spéciale. Если сравнивать, конечно, с Дакаром из Перу, который был в этом, в этом году, то не очень сложные дюны, но вот этот участок такой, ну, серьезный. А для нашего экипажа как бы проехали, нигде не подсели, и все хорошо. Let's get technical, because this is Tech Talk, a place where we discuss all the techniques and, of course, creative solutions in the world of Rally Raid. And today we will have a chat with Patrick of Sabretooth, and uh, we will tackle the question, how important is tyre pressure? Well, actually, tyres themselves are the single most important thing on this car, because it is the connecting the car to the ground yeah. and the surface area and the type of grip and everything else is crucial for traction because without traction there's no full momentum without full momentum you're quite literally you're not going anywhere so tires on a car absolutely crucial we spend a lot of time looking and testing and working out the correct tires yeah, the correct how tire do you pressures know when you have a good tire because you have a lot of brands of course well we did the obvious thing we are we're based in dubai in the uae uh, sabertooth motoring adventure uh, and we have two programs running continuously. The first yeah. one is in South Africa um, with Redlined uh, Motorsport and the second one is in Dubai. So we have a wonderful opportunity to have two different types of terrain, very rocky based, very similar to what we experienced in the last two days in Morocco, but also then we've got the sand conditions that again Morocco is going to be yeah. experiencing in the next two or three days. So a uh, lot of testing, all? we've tried them all, we've tried them at high tire pressures, low tire pressures, all different styles until we found the perfect uh, sweet spot that allows us to get the optimal performance out of the tire and also make sure we're able to uh, not run with punctures or damage to the tire. What is the most the single most important thing to, to look out for? So we've got the, the correct brand now. We run BF Goodridge tires on all our fleet, both for the sand fleet and the rock fleet. We run the KO2s in the, on the standard fleet and the rally cars we run the KDRs. But the single most important thing now we've selected our tire is the tire pressure. Because the tire pressure determines the amount of surface area in contact with the ground and also how the tire will respond when it comes into contact with obstacles such as yeah. logs or rocks or anything. Well, else. what if you have the combination of rocks and sand, for, for example? What do you do? That's a really good question because it's then got to be a, a compromise. It's got to be a blend between the sand condition pressure and the rock condition uh, how do you pressure. Adapt? 
we, again, it's just testing. We find out what works for us. Very careful. We look at the conditions of the next day. We've already done that today. We've yeah. talked, we spoke about what the conditions are like for, for tomorrow. We've identified that there's a lot of rocks. So we're actually running the KDR2 tomorrow because it has a sidewall, Kevlar sidewall, and it's significantly more resistant to uh, sidewall punches. You run a lower tire pressure, which allows the sidewall to bulge a little bit more and increase the surface width and length of the tire in contact with the ground. So light, lower pressures in sand conditions and in rocky conditions, higher pressures because it reduces the contact and makes it a little bit more resistant to any, uh, any objects that want to punch it. Okay. And if you have the combination, what do you do then? Because you, you can only choose one tire, you can't change it in the meanwhile while you drive, right? Once you've made your tire selection, that's it. We carry three spares, but of course, back to the pressures. You can then adjust the pressures. Uh, we okay. recently came back from Dakar in Peru, uh, and we got into a habit now of listening very carefully at the driver's briefing the evening before, picking up what the terrain was about. The next day, I would know as the navigator in my book that at kilometer 120, we went to sand conditions. So we'd stop the car and deflate, go through the sand conditions, and then get out the other side and reinflate. You lose precious time. You ultimately you are now taking pressure off the car and the crew because it's yeah. now working at the optimum uh, condition. Yeah. And let's not forget, we are in the endurance industry here. We're trying to endure, so time actually isn't a big issue because the, you can lose a lot yeah. of time and put a lot of stress on the car if you don't lower tire pressures in sand conditions, and then you're putting more stress on the engine, on the drivetrain, on all the components yeah, of the car, and it may end up st stopping you terminally. So, so it's a good investment.